Well, it's February 27. Welcome back. Landing with success. And um, I guess uh, we've had uh, a lot of content over the weeks. And um, I'm pretty sure last month, like on Leo's team's call, we went over the month and strategy. If you're unfamiliar with it, please refer to the video Who's from that. Back here? I'm going to ask you to mute when you join the call as a standard protocol. Like and, uh, game there we go. Um, as I was saying, about a month ago, we did a call, and the focus of that call was the month-end strategy. So you can find it on uh, the Royal Alliance YouTube channel, Aligning with Success Calls, or you can just scroll back into the core consultant uh, WhatsApp chat. By the way, just as an FYI, um, I often get people asking me, can you add so-and-so to the WhatsApp chat? And the answer is no. Um, in order to be able to add the numbers that we want to add on the WhatsApp chat, you have to add yourself or you have to have your person add themselves. And so you'll say, well, how, how do I do that? What, is there a link? There's a link. Um, you'll find that link in the WhatsApp chat group. You'll find that link in the core consultant newsletter, which we publish on the core consultant chat every month. And it goes out as an email newsletter. And in the email newsletter, there's a call to action to join the various WhatsApp groups. So please have your new consultants join the WhatsApp groups and to uh, join the newsletter. And just as an FYI, in case you missed, how do I get to my WhatsApp group? I'm going to switch my camera here so you can see this. Um, all right. So when you have a WhatsApp group, go to the top of the WhatsApp group. This is on my iPhone here. And click on the name. This could be any group you have. When you click on the name, then you'll see there's a sub menu. When you click on the sub menu, uh, you got menu links and docs. If you click on that, look what comes up. All the stuff that was posted either in uh, media or links or docs. So in this case, it's under links. Links is where I usually, where is where all the links are posted. So you could quickly, efficiently scroll back and find where the join the group link is. It's been posted several times. So you can just scroll back and all the pertinent links on how to join this group or any of the videos that we've done are all right here at your fingertips. So very handy dandy way to organize information and have it quickly at your fingertips. Also with respect to documents, click on the docs tab and you have quick access to the docs. So one of the beauties of this of this app is that you have access to all this information at your fingertips just by clicking on the name of the group or the name of the person uh let you know whoever it is that you want to see what you've shared with each other which is why i have the tools chat because i have all access to my tools that way now the only disadvantage to this is well you have to be on the chat to have accumulated stuff on the chat so you don't if you just join the chat today you wouldn't have all of that stuff automatically there um so that's that um so again a recall for the month end strategy which is where we're at right now just to point out who would be really needing this strategy right now is anybody who has done the work that being contacting inviting people during the course of the month if you're tracking anybody in your team who's been contacting inviting people during the course of the month, then now's the time to see where you can land some of those contacts as to either a customer um, or a consultant or both. And, um, and this is when you apply the strategy, which includes some incentives to make a decision right away, whether it's a product incentive or a volume incentive, depending on whether you're helping somebody rank advance or you're helping a customer make a product purchase. This is the time to pull out all stops and do the wheeling and dealing to close that month out with some with some chutzpah and set the tone for the upcoming month. I don't recommend you set a goal for March 
until this month is over. In other words, the month isn't over until the month is, in o is over. And if you haven't yet, you probably have, but if you haven't let, yet listened to Silver's a Blast video, it's on YouTube called Silver's a Blast, listen to it. It, it needs to become the battle cry for your business. It needs to be the thing that you remind yourself of. And that is that most of the amazing advances in rank usually happen at the last 24 to 48 hours of the month. And you'll hear some absolutely extraordinary stories there. And what's exciting about that is when that was video, when that was recorded, the requirement for silver was 20,000 points in one month. And now it's 6,000 points, which is considerably less. Yet, you'll find people who were on the last day of the month with even less than 6,000 points complete the 20,000 points on that audio. So we know it's doable. It's just a question of how committed are you and your, and your person to getting it done. Barbara, you have your hand up. Yeah, off topic, Mike. Happy birthday for tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, with respect to this past weekend, by the way, I want to congratulate everybody who was a part of the Seiko Kai. It was a great event. Um, they're they're sharp, they're they're informative, they're fun, and uh, you know it's just a great way for people to know that there is actually a community of Nikon out there. Um, I wish it was more interactive. Um, that's the one beef I have is that I'd like to see more faces. Um, However, right now, uh, some of us have been meeting behind the scenes. We're going to meet again on Thursday. I'll be sending that email out tonight or tomorrow, uh, Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern to continue our conversation about how we can make things more effective. One of the things um, I believe we, we'll probably resume is our prospecting meeting. We had a meeting called a Zoom In which was a very successful meeting and um, very high energy, great content. We, we, we covered the presentation called A Better Way, which is in revision, revision right now, minor revisions. Um, in any event, I think that'll be something we resume because it was some, an opportunity for you to bring guests of all calibers to a high level, high professionally calibrated uh, presentation, uh, presenting Niken and uh, both sides of it, the opportunity and the products. Um, I just, I have one more thing that I wanted to share tonight and then we'll just open the floor. Um, and I don't even recall if I, I wrote this down. I was going to put it on the Monday call. Um, as you know, as we all know, the thing that seems to be the most effective with Niken and is unique to Niken as a business is the fact that we can demonstrate products and create a wow, that wow factor, um, Without that wow factor, it's pretty hard to razzmatazz anybody to even take notice of us. Um, you know, people have a, a hard time getting people's attention in a very busy world, completely, um, you know, uh, with so much attention being drawn away from a person through social media. I mean, they're being messaged 50 million different ways. I can't even read an email without getting five or 10 different pings coming in from the different apps that are open. It's very annoying, and yet that's reality. And so that's the state we're in, where there's it's so easy to be distracted. It's so easy to say no to something because you just don't seem to have the time or the attention. Um, and actually, there's two things I want to say. And then, so one of the suggestions, and it's a really great one, is that we use our very special product to create a demonstration long distance. So how to duplicate Niken um, internationally across boundaries and long distance when it's so critical that a product demo happens. You know, if it didn't happen, I don't know if I'd be in Niken. That's how I was introduced to Niken. I had a product demo. So I think it, that being such an important part of how unique Niken is, um, it would be great if we made a habit of making certain, absolute certain, that there was no way we would leave this uh, undone. One of the first things we do is we create a product demo. And you might say, okay, so how am I supposed to do that if I'm living in Chicago and my prospect is living in Louisiana? And the answer is, get them a product. 
Now, there's ways, two ways to do that. You can either send it to them on your dime, or you can ask them to buy it on their dime as a leap of faith with the with the promise to, you know, repay them if they don't feel it was a worthwhile thing as part of their investigation. I personally think if a prospect is worth me going after them to recruit them, then I should be prepared to invest that uh, in that product. So now what product, if I was going to quickly get something into somebody's hands so that they in turn could do the demo? So I could actually show them how to do the demo on Zoom, or I could create a video, probably a better thing to do, create a video of me doing the demo on someone, sending it to them and saying, when your product arrives, do this. And that way, when it does, and when they do it, and they get their own wow factor without you even being there, now you have not only something that they can duplicate, um, but you have that wow factor. That's the most critical thing in our process that separates us from every other network marketing company out there. And I think we need to leverage what's so unique about us because they're thinking, you know, what, what's different about this? I'll tell you what's different about this. I'm going to send you something. You're going to do a demo. You're going to see how crazy wow this is. That's what separates this from everything. Now, what product would you consider right away? And I want you to think about this as the most duplicatable thing that could happen, that if your organization was doing this every day or every week or every month, not only would that create volume in itself, it would be auto ship, for instance, or, or duplicate, uh, duplicatable, but what, what product and what means would you recommend would be probably the most reliable, efficient, duplicatable thing we could do that we could replicate uh, ubiquitously across the board. Barb? Well, there are several, Mike, that would be very easy to do. Number one is the insoles. Number two is the far infrared. Because everybody has a cell phone in their hands these days. So we can use the Kinkotherm wraps with the cell phone. We can use the Kinkotherm wraps with the lemon or a sport bottle, the taste test, the strength test. And those are the ones that come right off my mind because they're easy to do, easy to send out to somebody, and it's not going to cost an arm and a leg to either party okay. if the interest is there. Okay. Does anyone else have an alternative? Yep, Dean? Um, I think what would be easy is doing the share app with the power band bracelet bingo because it's what 10 bucks to us we don't pay shipping on it it's you know it's an easy thing if it doesn't fit them because it might be a guy with a bigger wrist or whatever um they can give it to a family member to try it on and it seems like an easy way to do it okay and not only is it easy it's, well, I mean, it's the easiest way. Now you say it's 10 bucks. That's what the cost of the, uh, using the share app? I think that's in the US it is. I think it's like, um, you get, you do you buy them in groups? So if you buy yeah. four or five, four, it's 40 bucks, I think. Okay. And then I, you I, can buy more for more money, of course. And that works for people with apps, but I have several people that refuse to download the app. So then you have to take a different course. Okay. But it's great if people have the app. I think, yeah. however, we're not going to make a rule for the exception. We're going to make a rule for the rule, for the norm, for the where we want to go with this. So I think the, the share app and the power band bracelet as a simple duplicatable way to get product demos out there to people you're prospecting who are not local to you. I think that is a powerful, powerful tool that we need to start making part of our culture in Nikan. And I know for most of us, um, we had a product demo because we attended a presentation. And we were able to receive a product demo. And that, of course, created an effect mentally, emotionally. And that got us further into the, pro the process. So I would, I would suggest 
that you do that. And you do a, a, a video that you uh, can show how to demo that maybe two or three different ways. But at least it's something that if they were to do it to a significant other or a child or whatever, they could replicate that demo. They can just simply follow your video. It's got to be simple enough that they could re replicate it. Don't make it complicated. Don't talk too much. Make it as simple. And just remember, the key to duplication is if you are able to do something with a prospect that they can see themselves doing. That's the key. If they can't see themselves doing it, or it seems too difficult, uh, too time consuming, they won't do it. But if you've got a real simple process that's duplicatable, not time consuming, not complicated, that they can see themselves doing it, now you have the ability to create the wow factor anywhere. Um, if this was a protocol we followed as a, as a rule, we're creating volume in our organization through that just by the, the demos themselves, promotion. Remember, all costs to you for promotion is a discount, is a dis, is a tax deduction. So that's something to also consider. And uh, Michelle. Mike, I just sent um, a power band to a customer who had a difficult time with Nikan. And there's videos there to send as well. So I sent a note to thank her for, I appreciate her business. And um, I sent a video with it. It's, a, it's right there on the app. Okay. So that does make it very simple. It's not a demo of the yeah. product it's still a video. Right. Well, the promo video is good, but I'm, I'm saying what we're trying to do right now is establish a, a culture in Nikan for being able to present our most, our uniqueness. And all we're trying to do is create a wow, just a, a single, single wow. This is the tip of the iceberg. Wow. And, and yet it has so many facets to it because it generates volume, it creates interest, it has that wow factor, it is duplicatable because you're using the share app as a, as a rule, that's something they can download and duplicate. So it just, it just hits all, it presents a system. And I was saying on the last call that I was on um, that, you know, Dave Rolf does, uses a, an example from his personal story that I really like that that got his attention uh, and explained network marketing in the simplest of ways. And he said, you know, imagine there's a Coca-Cola machine on every corner. And every time somebody goes and buys a Coke, you get a dime. Uh, how many Coke machines would you want on? You know, how many Nikon consultants would you want? Now, how easy is it to become an econ consultant then becomes the question as to how viable is that? It costs a lot of money to set up an, a, a Coke machine. How much does it cost to set up an econ consultant? Nothing. They set themselves up for 30 bucks. And if all it took was your $10 loaner or, or a product promo to get them to go, wow, and see how simple that was, was it worth it? So you see what we're trying to do is show a simple strategy for replication so we can get momentum going behind replication. One of the things I also encourage people to deter from is the word business. Again, a lot of people, when they think of the word business, they think of everything a business represents. And if they are a business owner already, it's a very onerous thing. But if you talk about promotion, the idea of being able to be somebody who promotes sneak in. Promotion doesn't mean I have to quit my job. Promotion doesn't mean I have to go through the trouble of setting up all this stuff that anybody does when they're doing a business. But there's a great compensation plan available to somebody who wants to promote sneak in that can turn into a very interesting residual income, um, leveraged income. So Again, the, vo the, the words that we use become part of how they experience the possibility. How easy is this to do? How easy is this to, to promote? How easy is this to get involved in? How much do you need to know? The more you dumb it down so that it becomes more, again, a business of experience rather than a business of information. 
you know, my daughter at, at uh, we were talking at dinner tonight, and I can't remember exact context, but it, it, I'm sure it was business. Obviously, it was business. And she said something she heard from her papa. She said, facts tell, stories sell. So once again, out of the mouths of babes, although she's not a babe, she's 25 now. She's still sweet. Um, facts tell, stories sell. So we want to get back into the story selling business or the storytelling business and not the facts telling business. And if you need to become a presenter in order to be successful in ECAN, that's what you're telling your prospects. You're saying, I need to learn everything I need to know about FRI and magnetics and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And one of the things I remember way, way early on being able to say about Nikan was, I can't teach people how to sell a product. It's really complicated. And in terms of duplicating that, it's even more complicated. But I can teach people how to demo a product. And everybody can learn how to do that. So demo a product is, is again, this the, the show and tell approach, not the facts about something, but the impact of something, the stories, the demonstrations, those are the things that make us unique, nimble, quick to, to duplicate, to replicate, to express, and more impactful because that's what gets people's attention anyways. And what happens when you're new to Nikan or just when you've been around a while, is you tend to want to tell everything you know about something. And while that might be fascinating and interesting to you, it doesn't work in the, in the replication model. So, you know, just think about what we're trying to accomplish right now. We're trying to get into a growth curve that leads to momentum and exponential growth. And that means we have to break it down into the most simplistic approach as possible the most duplicatable approach that's possible. And the one thing, the thing that most impacts somebody who's already very distracted mentally, emotionally in their life. So we got to hit them on the emotional level, which is the storytelling and the demos. Barb, you have your hand up? I do. Um, something that I've been asked many times, how does this work? And my response is, I don't have a clue. I just know I've experienced tremendous benefits. I don't care to know how it works. As long as it works, that's all I'm concerned about. And that's usually enough. Or for they millions of people on four continents that. over the last 47 years, it's been working really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the other thing, let me see if I can remember the other thing. Uh, it'll come to me. Um, there is another thing, and maybe Leo can remember what was the salient point that I was talking about on his call. Um, it'll come to me. In any event, let's take some questions or or some. We're, again, we're in the month end stretch here, so if you haven't learned, you were, what, you were uh, telling about the. If you may, uh, I took some notes, uh, Mike. Yeah, you were saying um, the the way we do the um, the steps to do the story that will be thirty to forty five seconds, and ah. starting with the background. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one, too. And I just remembered what it was that I was talking about, what, what I wanted to mention. So I was saying, um, one of the calls that Leo's team has always had very, very successful results with um, is there is a call where they don't talk business. Traditionally, they just simply do product stories. And so they invite customers and, and anybody who's got a product story to come and share their story. And it's a 30 minute call. And typically that's where they get their highest attendance for, for um, prospects. Um, we were talking about maybe adding a business component, but that business component should be on the tail end of the call, not on the front end. And the transition to that would be, for those of you who might like to know, 
there, there are some of us who've taken advantage of promoting Niken and earning an additional income by doing so. That's how you transition. Rather than you can start your own business. There's that word. No. Talk about promoting. So they've just heard a bunch of stories. Exciting product stories, experiences from people. And for those of you who might be interested in making a little bit of extra money, uh, some of us have taken it upon ourselves to become promoters of Nikan. We'll tell you a little bit about that. And so now short, concise, 30 to 45 second stories. Um, and here's what you would cover on your story. The only thing that matters. What's your background? Why? Just because they need to know that every walk of life is represented. Two what you first thought. So when you were first introduced, you may have had a, oh, this is crazy. This is silly. I've been to, you know how many doctors I was, blah, blah, whatever. And then what you discovered. In other words, you went from one to the next. You went from maybe resistance or opposition to actually being curious, interested, and you discovered um, how credible it was, whatnot, people. And then lastly, what you're, what you've experienced since. And so being able to have, let's say, for instance, 10 stories like that, uh, and each story was 30 seconds, that's five minutes, let's say, rounded up to eight minutes or seven minutes, seven or eight minutes of rapid fire, boom, 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 all positive, all relatable stories about what the transition to being a promoter of the amazing Nikan stories. That is a great prospecting call. That's a call that's going to got, get people asking questions. So consider consider maybe a, a team call where your team now, it might be just you and another, but it'll be, it won't be long before it's you and 10 others, where you have a call where you share your stories and the sh stories of any customers that you can that you invite to the call, and you make that part of your business protocol. It's just something that you're doing to grow your team. Don't wait for somebody else to do it. Yeah, there's probably going to be others that actually do this. But this is about us growing our teams, not growing somebody else's team. So we need to take a bit of ownership on this. And again, keeping it simple. So um, and the last thing I wanted to mention, which was actually the first thing I mentioned on the other call, was so there were some invitations to events, one particular this weekend, where there was not as many people in attendance as expected. Anybody ever have that? Raise your hand if you've ever had an a, a event where you didn't have the attendance that you thought you were going to get. Come on, show everybody. Raise your hand. Okay, of course. It's just the, <laughs> the way it is, right? So, but we then said, okay. What can we do to improve attendance? What's, what's the, the, the key ingredient to increasing the probability of somebody actually wanting to come to your event? And some of the suggestions were, oh, well, maybe we should send door prizes. And maybe we should have meals and tell them that there's going to be you know, food and whatever, and whatever. First thing that came to mind when I was hearing those things was they're all external motivators. They're all come because it shines and come because it glistens and come because it's all of this stuff out here, which, by the way, they're getting every 15 seconds on social media. So it's all external motivation. What would really drive somebody to come to something, especially if it's something that's going to take time out of their life, which at this point in time, again, with all the distractions and the, the, the you know, working twice as hard for half the pay, people are less likely to be interested in investing time is internal motivation. What's internal motivation? What drives somebody to do what they do? And what, of course, what came to mind was the very thing that we always talk about. Step number one. Step number one is verify. Identify and verify that they actually have a motive. They actually have a why that there's an area in their life that they're really interested in improving and get them to admit it. You know, I like to ask the question on a scale of one to 10, how serious are you about making that improvement or making that difference you talk about? That would be the reason to come. So 
it's critical, I think, that we are prepared to have a more, um, a less superficial conversation in the invitation process. And the other question is, you know, what happens if they raise questions or doubts or objections? And for me, those are just opportunities for me to learn more about where they're coming from. Because if they knew what I knew, and if they could live the way I live and enjoy the benefits that I've enjoyed by my association with Niken, they would never say no. What stands between a yes and a no is the information, the understanding. So first thing I want to do is understand where is this no coming from? Where, where is this objection coming from? If you really, really make a point of being somebody interested enough in the other person to dig rather than concerned about yourself and how they may respond. That's how you can tell whether you're on the right track or not. Are, are your questions or your reactions based on how it makes you feel? Or are you responding based on how it makes them feel? You know, where's your intention? Where's your focus? Is it on you and your fear? Or is it on them and their need? That's how you know what side you're working with. And so if you if your attention turns to you, that's your ego. Your ego jumping in and saying, oh, I don't like the way they make me feel. I don't like what they're saying. <laughs> what if they don't? You know, forget that. That doesn't work. It'll never work. Your ego will never solve the problem. It's always stay focused on where that person is, where they're coming from. Seek to understand in order to be understood, always. So being a master recruiter or a master prospector is the same thing as being a master listener. A master listener, where you're really listening to understand where is this person coming from? Why are they saying that? Or where is that in? And then you start asking, not, to, not afraid of asking, ask with sincerity because you really want to know. Paul, your hand up. I just wanted to echo what you're saying. And I, you know, this works on feeling. And I'll just have to say, I'm working with two people. One will sponsor the other. And the reason uh, they're not called... I know them well, but I, you know how you have a feeling with people that they're going to, they're going to get in and get the whole kit and caboodle and tell other people you, you have feelings about people. And I know now what, that I, my, I, I know that I'm right. I can tell in advance, way in advance, what's going to happen to people. And without really speaking that much about Niken, but spending time on perhaps issues that other people didn't want to be bothered with. And so you're absolutely right. Yeah. Um, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Yeah. You know, these... These things that we used to rhyme off in our training sessions all the time, those one-liners, those zingers, they're so true. And if they, they're more true, I think, today than ever. I just think that I know how I feel living in the world I'm living in, where everybody's vying for my attention one way or another. It's just like, just constant. And and a lot of people who sing that, my, my, every time I try to raise my hand, Zoom crashes, I want to share something. Okay, so wellness home it's specialist. Mrs. Hi, Mrs. Kramer. I was wondering where you were. <laughs> Let, go ahead, Let share. Whoever was talking, I'll finish, and then I would like to share. No, something. no, no, go ahead, go ahead. That was me. You, nobody else was, everybody else was finished? That was me, and I, I just lost my train of thought. Ah, okay, sorry. Um... In light of this um, train derailment, or several train derailments, but especially the one in Ohio and the toxic uh, 
the pollution, the air pollution, the water pollution, and other kinds of pollution. Um, I have invested some time learning how to use links, create links in my web, in my weekend website. And I created uh, one for water and one for air and then one for specific things. And I'm posting those links with an introduction um, about the, the Ohio situation on um, Bright Eon Social and on um, USA Life, not live, but life, L-I-F-E. Those are two uh, social media platforms that I post on um, since I don't do Facebook um, or YouTube. So um, I just started doing that the last few days and I'll, and I, I made bit.ly um, link, shortened the links with bit.ly so I'll be able to trade who, um, you know, how many views I get and follow up on, on things that way. Cool. Okay, what, what was that first one you were talking about? The link, linked, LinkedIn? What is it your, or is it Linktree? No, the the um on my website, my LinkedIn website. Uh huh. Oh, you created links. Created links, yeah. Got I created it. Created links to our LinkedIn product. Right. And I did one for water, the whole, all of the water, the water products page, mm -hmm. so they can look at all the water, all the different water things, and a different one for the air, um, and I think I created some other ones as well. Uh, on and Bit then you customize them using Bitly? Yes, yes, because that I didn't do tiny. I started to do tiny URL, and then I said, "Wait a second! I can do the same thing on Bitly, and I I can have a record of who's, um, you know, how many how many um, visits, views, and and clicks, and so forth." Okay, so let me just explain that. So Bit dot ly um, is a an app or a you, uh, URL that you can go to to create small links that you can customize. So for instance, mine is, I think I got one called bit.ly forward slash my water. I think that's mine. And that drives you to my waterfall link, my Nikon waterfall link on, on my page, something like that. I, I don't remember if it's new, old, whatever. The point is you can customize these links bit dot ly forward slash customize and it converts your really really long Nikon links into something everybody can remember real quick and you can share on any social media um that's uh what and the links that you were talking about is the links you create in your back office create a link and you can create a link to the shopping cart so you can load some stuff into a shopping cart and as soon as they click on that link boom they're in your shopping cart with the thing loaded which means they can just cash out. Or you can go to the page as the alternative. You create a link that goes to, let's say, the page of the waterfall. It's when they go there. Idea, by the way, to test it first yourself before you send it out to somebody. Absolutely. Always test your links. Now, there is another app that I like called Linktree. Um, I think it's link.tr or link tree t-r-e-e -E. anyway you'll look it up um let me see if i can find mine and um what's nice about this is you can create a multitude of customized links so so for instance um yeah here's mine it's link so l-i-n-k-t-r dot e-e -E. link t-r dot e-e -E. and so this was just my first attempt you can see, let me switch my view here. So, uh, okay. so you can see I've only got a couple of them right now. You create your profile and then right below is just every number of links that you you create and you, you name the link, right? Total Wellness Solutions, Facebook, whatever, My Water. And so you can create a link tree profile. And then when you do your social media, whatever you're doing there, you just say, 
click on my bio or true link in bio and it's this link to my page which in my case is it's like a whoops let's see like a Nikon url it's a link tr.ee forward slash my profile is good vibes 2020 so i just have to do the one thing and when they click on that they see you know how to get started whatever it is that i want to do it's it's without having to build yourself a web page. It's just, this is where all my pertinent links are. You know, you can have 10, 20. I've seen different network marketers use these links for different things. And so whatever you're promoting, the link is on the link tree. So you only have to ever remember the one thing and they can see everything there. Uh, another great tool. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. So getting back to the why the motive people will move mountains to get what they want but if there's no relationship to what they want and what you're offering they may just play lip service pay lip service because it's more convenient to get you off their back to say oh yeah i'll be there and then of course you walk away especially if you're new thinking oh i got one coming no you don't um I did an ad, I got to tell you this, once upon a time back in the day when I was launching in BC, I decided to run a Nikken ad, a blind ad, an opportunity ad, Japanese giant launching British Columbia. And then there was a blurb in the ad, just bullet points about most, you know, Japanese, uh, multi-billion dollar company, unique Japanese wellness technologies, opportunity, blah, 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 whatever, just a simple ad. This is in a traditional newspaper back in the day. And um, and then um, the telephone number, 24-hour message. That meant a person can call and not actually have to talk to anybody. They could just listen to a pre-recorded message, which was a nice pre-recorded message, about 60 seconds, that explained a little bit more. And didn't use the word Nikan, didn't use, although back then it didn't matter because you didn't have, you know, all the uh, search engines to actually look it up. But... It was enough to say, you know, leave me your name number in a brief message, the best time to reach you. Leave me your name number in the best time to reach you. Um, and uh, if you're, you know, if you want to meet. So I would get these voicemail messages. And I, and I showed the person I was doing this with how finely tuned um, when, you, when you listen, you can be. I would give a person one star just listening to their voice and their recorded voice message. If they had attitude, they would get no star. If they were just simply following the instructions, leave me your name, your telephone number, and the best time to reach you, they would get a star if they followed instructions because that was already giving me an indication they, they're teachable. If I got attitude, they got no star. The next thing would happen. So I would know a one star or no star. That's the first thing I would get just simply out of the uh, of the uh, other message. I would know. Um, then when I would call them to interview them, I would actually interview them. I'd say, you know, before we agree to meet, I think it would be important for us to know whether it's worth both our time. So if you mind, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you some questions. And I would ask four or five very specific questions. First one would be, what is it about the ad that got your attention? And so forth. And so by the end of that uh, questionnaire interview, I would give them another star if I thought, okay, they were mindful, respectful, they answered whatever. If they had network marketing experience, I would give them a second star. They could get as many as three stars. And by the end of that call, I would have on my sheet a zero star, one star, two star, and three star. So now... Um, when I went to book the appointment on that call, I would book them in a time slot. Now, let's say I had a desire to have three people in a meeting, which was ideal. Sometimes I would have seven people booked in that meeting, but I know there's only three people showing up and I knew which three. And how did I know? The no stars would never show up, ever. The, the three stars, they are always there. The two stars, was um, also always there. And the one star was a 50-50. So I could tell for sure who was going to show up and who wasn't going to show up just based on my starring, how I would star them because I was paying attention 
to their attitude while I was engaging with them. Their attitude told me more about them than anything else. So when you get really good at communicating and listening and asking questions and listening to how people are answering those questions, that's when you learn about them. And that's when you get a sense about whether or not they're, you know, going to do something, whether or not they're serious. Um, and, and you can tell. So if you're inviting people to an event, if you haven't had enough interaction with them, you don't know if when they say I'm coming, they really mean I'm coming. Usually, I would say if somebody says they're coming, it's a 50-50 chance they're coming. If I follow up with a text message or a reminder and I don't hear from them, that usually means they're not coming. So I can scratch them off the list. And if they do come, hey, it, it'd be like, like one of those long shots. Great. But I would know how to gauge my expectations based on people's reactions. But I would make sure there was enough interaction that I could actually have some kind of a gauge. So when it comes to invitations, things come up. So how many of you have that that uh, invitations to your home home for dinner? And there's always that family member that's late. Always. Like you can absolutely bank on the fact that they're going to be late. You can time it. We we actually run bets here. We 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 set the time. We say, okay, who's in? Who's at 30 minutes? Who's at 40 minutes? And we and we have bet because there's those that are always on time and there's those that you can absolutely guarantee are going to be late. No, no matter what's happening, the sky could be falling. And 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 that's what happens. You know, it's annoying. But it's it's less annoying if that person texts you and says, look, I'm something's held me up, or you know, I'm gonna, you know, hold on, I'm gonna be there in about 15 minutes. So be that person. If for any reason you're going to be delayed, let the person who's waiting on you know, not at the hour you're supposed to be meeting them, in advance. You know in advance if you're going to be on time. It's very disrespectful to tell somebody or not tell somebody when they're sitting there waiting for you whether you're going to be late or not, when you know very well you're going to be late or you're going to be on time well in advance. So as soon as you think you're going to be late, as soon as you know you're going to be late, let them know. That's the person you want to be, and that's the person you want to attract. But since we attract the people we are, since the people we attract into our life are a reflection of who we are being, you want to improve the situation of who you attract, you got to look in the mirror and start, you know, looking at what you need to improve as a person in order to be attractive to the kind of people you want to attract. So it's a bit of a test. It's a bit of a this. It's a bit of that. But that's what humans being more really is all about. Humans being more in integrity with who we really are. I think that's how you finish that sentence. So the more you become aware of who you really are, and what you're really capable of, the more you become expectant of that in others. But it's not fair to be expectant of that in others when you're not that yourself. Fair enough? Makes sense? So I can't expect everybody to be on time when I'm not the one who's on time. That's being hypocritical. But if I become the person who you can bet on is going to be on time, or at the very least, if for any reason I'm going to be delayed, I let you know in advance, then you're going to be you're going to respect me. And then I'm going to be the, the one who can expect the same in, in return. Being late so, is like saying my time is more valuable than yours. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's very disrespectful. Anyway, so uh, any questions, any uh, feedback before we wrap up? Yes, Leo. Oh, okay, I, John, I want to just introduce my new star in Quebec. She's here tonight. She she signed a few weeks ago and she did a para powerhouse, my first powerhouse on my group, Francine Bobo. She's there. Hello, Francine. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to Nikan. 
What can yeah. okay? Let's let's hear your short story. Let's tell you know the last few minutes we have here. Let's hear you. Who are you? Where you come from? What's been your experience? Um, my name is Francine Bourbeau. I come from Montreal, West Island, and my background. I'm a professional health uh, workers, and so I knew already the really good effect of the magnetisms and some of other because I've studied in naturopathy and other area and uh, when uh, I attended to a meeting uh, that presentations of Nikon I said oh this is pretty good I knew Nikon for many years ago but I did not know that there was other things than the mattress or whatever and there was some things that was more practical affordable accessible simple and that works because I I didn't I didn't even have to try to know it works because the for me the numbers of years that Nikon has been there and and I could hardly find any complain about Nikon's and its products. I mean, I said, this is a solid blue chip. So then to me, I said, uh-huh, time for retirement, time for something else. And I feel good about that. I feel good about offering something that is wonderful and that I can feel that I will be proud to offer. And that's what it is. And I did it and I offered it. I didn't have to explain much. There was great, uh, Sandra was very wonderful uh, to, to really give me all the answer quickly because I went like a fireball. I just went and I said, poof, go. And that's it. Here I am. Fantastic. Now you already have a member on your team who's a senior, yes? Yes. Yeah. And they have a member on their team as well already? Yeah, she signed up the same night. Okay. Wow. Excellent. And, and they got their orders and they I did just basically sort of a bit of waiting for me to to give them some training. I have English and French community. So I'm so both. so are you now executive? I think so. <laughs> I didn't even ask questions about the compensation plan. I know, I, didn't I know, care. I love it. I love I'm it. I'm sorry. I Leo didn't would care. know. Leo, is she executive now? Yes. Beautiful. Good Francine, work. I like it when somebody doesn't know they're already a rank advanced because that means you're just focused on what you need to be focused on. It's Leo's job to worry about that for you. Good for you. Sorry. That's... Bravo. That's Thank awesome. You. Congratulations. So we have our, as I said, in, in the last call, we have our banister moment here we, with uh, with respect to the powerhouse in Canada. So we have our first powerhouse in Canada, Francine. Good for you. I'm going for the second one in March. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Very good. Well, then, um, anyone else before we wrap? Okay. Listen, month isn't over yet. We've got 24 hours, a little bit more, to make magic happen. Uh, there's a lot of people who would really benefit from knowing we exist. So get out there, let them know about it. Um, don't set a goal for March until it's March. And uh, and then we can worry about what we're going to do there. Kevin, the man in the shadow. Yes. Hi. Yeah, it's dark here, isn't it? <laughs> it's dark here. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Uh, so for the powerhouse, uh, we need to sell three fountains right? Uh, through Autofoss. But we also need one consultant. Can this consultant buy one of the waterfalls? Or it's one consultant and three waterfalls? So, so yeah. you have three people who purchase the waterfall through the, the, the link, the special link. Mm -hmm. So three separate customers. Any one of those customers can then also upgrade and become a consultant. Mm. All right. And so that consultant needs to do 500 points once they've done that, once they've upgraded. Or you can just sponsor a fourth person as a consultant who does 500 points. So long as there's at least three waterfalls purchased, three customers, and one 
consultant who does 500 points, which could come from any one of those three customers, then that's a completion of a powerhouse. So, um, and I believe, Francine, one of your customers is somebody who became a consultant. Is that correct? Right. So that's one of how, how her power, powerhouse was completed. And then the person who becomes a consultant, they may have some customers lined up as well already so and which is what happened with Francine I think you have somebody who has already customers so there you go I well, had them good. both Thanks. the same night at the same time and they were oh so other, let me ask you so that I did, I you it. had them in the same night same time did you have a presentation at your home what did you do <laughs> I bought the the kit to start with I said there's not you know I cannot go halfway so they Which came kit? to my house that I bought the, the the water pack. Oh, the energy yeah. pack. Okay. The energy pack. And then I had them in my house. First, they sit in the chair with the cushions. And then I just had everything just right there. And they came for other reason at my house. And I happened to invite a lot of people that week because uh, I was preparing to come in the States. I'm in the States right now. So therefore, it just happened. And I just talked to them about it, you know, and got them to try. Some of them went with the insole already. And I had the extra pair and they went with it and they couldn't wait. So that's it. I did it like that, one after the other. Yeah. So I think I must have that week, uh, four or five people coming to my house for sure. Okay. And she's on the road for another powerhouse for March. She wanted to, it's the second one. All right then. So there you go. Do as many as you can uh, in the two, until the end of March. Actually, you, yeah, we have until the end of March, everybody to do powerhouse. And then as of April, if somebody joins, they have the month of April plus two months. So at that point forward, it's the month they join plus two months. We call that the launch window. And the goal, of course, of the launch window is to create a launch, help somebody get some results fast in their business. And then that's something they can duplicate. They can teach. It's their story they can tell. Remember, one of the things I said is, number four, what have you experienced? So it'd be nice. Now, Francine has a great experience. She says, I joined. I did a few presentations. I completed what the, the powerhouse and my first powerhouse, and um, and now I'm helping others create a powerhouse. I'm doing another powerhouse, and it's just a simple plan and strategy that's very, very powerful in terms of its potential. So there we go. The, big, the, the banister moment has happened. I'm waiting for one banister moment right now for the silver. The silver in a month. We have that banister moment, and you watch the popcorn. Pop, 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 how it's going to start happening. All right, everybody, have a, a great uh, month end. Make a count. Happy See you next birthday. month. <laughs> Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Thank Remember you. the kickoff on Wednesday, everybody. Right on. I missed my birthday. I was 81 on the 19th of February. Young lady, look at you. <laughs> Way to go. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you, everyone. Happy birthday. Thank you, sir. Bye.